two and forty years. As I sat down, happy memories of previous visits, not only there, but to another Lake District theatre as well, the old laundry in Venice, came flooding back. Amongst other things, I thought of the many Alan Akeborn plays I'd seen at Bromis. That's where his plays come before they go to the West End. And of those plays, the one that stuck in my memory was based around Christmas get-togethers with neighbours. And then one of the last plays that I'd seen at Keswick uh, before the Covid pandemic was Abigail's Party. Both of these plays use the setting of entertaining to make shrewd observations about human behaviour and social status. Because of our need to eat and the fact that humans are relational beings, a lot of important meetings do take place in this sort of setting. And this is highlighted by today's Bible readings, both of which include some form of entertainment. I'm going to call our first reading the Desert Banquet. This wasn't a case of giving a bit of food to keep some passing strangers going. It was a lavish meal. There was freshly baked bread, a choice cut of meat, and that certainly would have taken time to prepare and roast. A great deal of effort was being taken, and it's worth thinking, who were those visitors? On the surface, three passing travellers. There is a suggestion at the beginning of the reading that it's God. But finally, it seems that Abraham recognises that at least one is God's messenger, an angel. Now I think that we do ourselves a disservice if we only think of angels in the form we depict them in most nativity plays. I was recently with some people from a church in Blackpool who were talking about the angel Ten. Now we might have heard of Gabriel, Michael and Raphael, but Ten? It seems they were holding a meeting and a man they didn't know turned up saying, Terry's invited me. Is he here? None of the people in the church knew a Terry, but the man stayed and kept coming back to church and worshipping. And then a few weeks later, a family turned up, again invited by Terry, who still wasn't known to any of the church members. Who is Terry? They called him the Angel Ted because he brings God's message and invitation and draws people towards God. So what about the message passed on in this reading, our first reading today? It's a message for both Sarah and Abraham, although they are separated because she's sorting out the food. The message given seems so far-fetched to say. It's as though she thinks that it's the ramblings of someone with desert sunstroke. But Sarah is caught up with an issue which is highly relevant for today. And that is that we tend to separate into thoughts of faith or dominate our thoughts through logic. God is working his purposes out, but he doesn't conform to human logic. He doesn't have to, 
because he was God. Which brings us to the well-known story of Martha and Mary as they entertain Jesus and the people following Jesus. Sometimes we're asked which of the sisters we identify with. The majority usually say Martha. We like to be on the go and see as doing something useful. Martha wants hospitality to be just right. She doesn't want those visitors into the house saying that the entertainment was better the previous week in the house down the road. We might not admit it, but secretly I suspect that we may think that Mary is a little bit lazy. But what is Mary doing? Let's go back to the purpose of the gathering in the house. And it wasn't just to have a meal. Because Jesus is teaching. He happens to be doing that in the setting of a meal. Think of an early form of Alpha. Mary wants to learn from the ultimate teacher, Jesus. And it's a form of discipleship that she is engaging in as she sits and listens to what Jesus is saying. And she does that so that she is prepared and ready to speak for him and to serve him in different ways in the future. Now Mary isn't literally going to be sitting at Jesus' feet for all of her, her life, although spiritually that's where she is. And spiritually, it's where we should be as well, at Jesus' feet. But once again, God is working out his purpose in an unexpected way. And once again, I think we are in danger of falling into a trap. This time, it's the trap of playing off the two sisters against each other. One act two, one more sin it. However, what both of the stories remind us of is that we, if we really listen to what God is saying, how unexpected that may be, as it has been in the case of those two meanings, it isn't long before we become active for him in the way that he wants, and not as we think we should be. Amen.